Hey everybody, in today's video we're talking about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and specifically how I actually have this guy rigged out. Now this is going to be a really quick video, I'm just going to dive right in. I'm going to talk about the pieces that I have put together here. Some of it is normal, some of it is kind of unorthodox. Some of you might be looking at this right now thinking, what the heck did he do? But I'm going to put uh, links to all of these products down below. Most of them are going to be Amazon affiliate links. Click. Thank you. Um, a lot of them though, some of them will be uh, B&H, some of them will be eBay because some of these parts are kind of hard to find now. But uh, yeah, let's just dive right in and let's get into it. So I'm going to cut to B-roll wherever I can, but uh, just in the meantime, I'm going to kind of just twirl it around like this and kind of give you an idea of, of how I have it situated uh, here on this particular tripod. So the, uh, the tripod that it's situated on is this uh, Kair uh, tripod off of Amazon. Not expensive, but uh, really nice and sturdy. I have it, uh, on top of that I have the Zeppin Micro 2 slider, which is an awesome slider. Uh, it's got great friction um, control, makes it so you can actually have a really nice steady uh, push and pull mechanism. And uh, you know, it stays where you want it to stay. And then on top of that is the actual head that came with the KR tripod. It was actually a nice fluid head, which I have it sitting on now. And then on top of that, I have this other little blue guy here. This is called the Liebeck QR adapter. Uh, it's kind of pricey, around $50, but what I was having a hard time with was having the quick release plate sliding into this tripod head. Uh, I was having an issue because I had, the way I have these handles set up in the front, they weren't giving me enough clearance to be able to take the rig and slide it into the 501 release plate like you normally would. It just wasn't able to, to get down low enough and slide in. The quick release plate idea is really nice because all you have to do is unlock it, hit the quick release right there, and you can pop the whole thing right out. Super simple, just like that. And then it has this nice little reassuring click when it goes back in. Lock it, and then it's right back to where you need it to be. So that's kind of the support system for the rig. And after that, I'm using just the regular Tilta uh, base plate that you can buy it has a small rig eight millimeter rails sitting through it there is a lens support sitting up in there i don't know if you can see it very well there's a lens support sitting up in there and you know it is kind of pushed far back on the lens i typically i would like the lens support to be a little bit further up to, toward the front of the lens but i mean i'm a little constricted with my eight millimeter rods i could or excuse me eight inch rods i could push these up to 12 inch rods if i wanted to but I think you'll see later, I'll do some B-roll of how I'm actually holding it. And I think you'll see later, having it nice and snug against my body, just the eight inch rods seem to put it where I want it to actually fit my hands. So those eight inch rods have these uh, small rig rosette uh, to 15 millimeter rod adapters built onto them. And there's these two handles here. There's a small rig uh, right hand grip, and then there's the Tilta, uh, power grip, I guess you could call it. A couple, let me backtrack a little bit. The thing I like about the rosette uh, handles especially is that you can twist them and turn them how you want them exactly. Tilta does make this power handle for their cage, which I'll get to in a second, but that kind of sits right up here. And that was never really a very ergonomic fit for me to have my hand just sitting up there the whole time. It just kind of like made my hand do it like, like that, essentially. It just doesn't feel right. The way I have my hands now, it's down, it's, it's, it's more forward like this, and I'm kind of holding it more like a joystick, you know what I mean? I'll show you that in a little bit, but uh, that's, that's the nice thing about rosette adapters to me. They, they twist into the position that you want, and especially on these rails, I can move them like this. So I can loosen the actual uh, rosette adapter on the rail and move the handle exactly where it feels good and then just tighten that down, tighten that down and then boom, you know, it's perfect. So I have them where I want them. And that's another reason why this quick release plate again was so nice is because I was thinking about, you know, okay, well I'll just loosen the rosettes, move the handles out of the way, slide it back into the tripod. But, you know, then I'd have to kind of recalibrate how the handles felt. With, with having this uh, this quick release plate here, that prevents me from actually having to do that. So again, uh, rosettes, great for, for handle placement. I do not want to gloss over how awesome this uh, Tilta power handle is though. 
So you stick one like medium size NPF, I think it's like a 570 battery up in here. Uh, and the way I have this thing cabled, it controls my Nucleus Nano follow focus. Uh, it also had, and it controls it through this wheel right here, which is really nice. I mean, it's just like right there at like my fingertips. Am I getting that? Yeah, there you go. Right there on the fingertips. It's really, really nice. Um, and then I also have a start stop record button, which I bought the cable for. So I can literally be moving along and then boom, I can stop the recording, start the recording right from the handle. Boom, boom, boom. It's really, really nice. Um, and like I said, this is also powering the Nucleus Nano. So on a previous rig, when I was running the X-T4, I actually had um, a separate little USB uh, battery, and like an anchor battery, and that was what I was using to charge the, uh, the Nucleus Nano. But, you know, this is nice. And so it's a handle, it's a battery solution, it's a record start stop, and it controls focus. So this thing is, is it's integral. It's like a great buy. It's, it's pricey, but I mean, it does like, four or five things, so no worries. Before I move up any higher on the rig, I do want to address all this black stuff you probably see on this wooden handle rig. A lot of people say, oh, the wooden handle feels really great. I don't know, I mean, yeah, it's like, it's, it's ergonomically nice, don't get me wrong, but I bought these little adhesive uh, um, pads on Amazon. I'll link to them again in the description below. They're adhesive. I kind of made like little strips to like exactly where my hand fits on this thing so it's like got a nice little it's like a little cushion and it feels really nice and again i use that i'll get to it in a second but on the top handle up here i don't know if you can see this yet it's kind of hard under the light i think but i, I put a lot of adhesive strip around this too because i just i want it to be a nice comfy top handle so um i don't know i think when it comes to, to rigging stuff out it, comfort for handling anyway sort of trumps you know I don't know, design. <laughs> yeah, wood is great, but I mean, it feels better this way, so why not, right? Jumping right up, uh, let's talk about the lens and the camera itself. Obviously, the camera is the Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. It's in the Tilta cage. Real quick word about Tilta versus small rig. I bought both cages when I first got the camera, and I didn't know which one I was going to go with, so I tried small rig first, and here's how I look at it. They both make really great products, but small rig is for people who uh, liked Lego as a kid, but like you just want like a box of random Lego. You just want to make your own stuff. You're like a master builder or whatever, right? You just, so that's what small rig does. Small rig gives you a bunch of pieces and you put it all together how you want it. And sometimes it fits right, sometimes it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't designed to do what you're trying to do, you know, I mean, maybe, you know, like a piece doesn't go together exactly. And what I'm getting at here is that Tilta makes cages too, but they also make these things like these handles, these power handles, these grips, this, you know, the base plate that this, that this thing is sitting on. It's all designed to go together. So it's like playing Lego again, but you get, here's a set and you get instructions and you know that everything in that set is going to fit together per, you know, precisely, perfectly. Um, generally, I feel like Tilt is a little bit more expensive than the small rig equivalents, but like I said, for the fact that I know that if I buy the Tilt to base and the Tilt to cage and the Tilt to handle, they all fit together seamlessly, perfectly, um, and they work together, you know? So, you know, I, when, when, when all was said and done, I thought to myself, all right, you know, this, this is the right way to go. Toto was it. The lens that I'm using primarily on here is a native Micro Four Thirds lens. I used Micro Four Thirds way, way back in the day, like when I first got into photography, I, I had a Panasonic G6. And, you know, I looked at the Olympus stuff too, and I just, I loved Micro Four Thirds, especially for the size of it. Um, and so when I first got the cinema camera though, like, you know, my, I feel like my sensibilities have changed a little bit. I feel like I wanted the cinema glass and uh, I did that, you know, I had SLR magic lenses, but they weren't fitting quite right on the mount. So then I switched those up for some Miki cinema lenses, which were great. Like those Miki, Meike, Miki, Miki? Mickey, Mickey, whatever. I feel like those cinema glass, the, those cinema lenses, the Mickeys, they're, I mean, they're amazing, don't get me wrong. But you know, I had the 16 and the 25 and the way this thing is situated, 
if I wanted to do kind of like a run and gun thing, which I eventually do, like when this whole COVID thing goes away, you know, in like three years, um, I do want to be able to quickly adjust to uh, whatever I'm shooting. And I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not usually like on a set, like I want to do documentary stuff. So I didn't want to like un undo the focus, pull the focus thing off, or pull the nano away, change out a lens, you know, put the nano back on, recalibrate. There's just, there's just a lot of stuff kind of involved in changing a lens out for a focal length. And I, one thing I, I, I super hate is when you're filming something and like you, 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 you frame it up and all of a sudden you realize, ah, oh, geez, I'm not wide enough or I wanna be a little bit tighter, but I can't get closer. Oh, I'll just do it in like post, I'll zoom in or something. That's just not the same. The range you get with this Olympus, this is the Olympus 12 to 40 2.8. People, people back at home, you guys are like, tell us the name of the lens. Sorry, it's the Olympus 12 to 40 2.8 all the way through, it's a zoom. And I like it because, I don't know, it's just, it's got that, it's got a great range. So it's kind of like the equivalent of roughly like a 24 to 80, something like that. Um, the numbers are pretty close there. But it's 2.8 all the way through. Not that I, I shoot everything wide open, I really don't. But um, yeah, it's like, with the solution I have here, it does kind of vignette at 12. So it's really only usable for me and I'll tell you why here in a second, but it's really only usable for me around like 14 or 15 millimeters and then up from there. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, I could talk about zooms versus primes all day, but for me, the zoom works best on this particular rig. I have it set up with the uh, zoom XUME magnetic system here. There's a prism lens effects filter inside. I don't see if you can get it right there. There's a prism lens effects filter built in here. What you're seeing on the outside here is the um, adapter ring for the Tilta Mini Matte Box. Where is it? Tilta Mini Matte Box. So this is the adapter ring and basically what happens is that just slides on top like that and then you can lock it down. Boom, lock it down. And then that is essentially how the map box is situated. And that, that's good for helping like veiling flare and stuff like that. But I was also having a situation where I wanted to be able to use this uh, KNF concept variable ND filter, but I wanted a way to get it on and off quickly. I initially had a four by 5.65 filter here, or is it 4.65 by five? I'll write it up on the screen. I originally had one of the square filters or rectangular filters built in here, but I couldn't you know, get it in and out quickly, easily. So I just ended up using, again, that magnetic zoom XUME system. And so I can put the ND filter on if I have to. That that's, works as my ND. This one is nice too, because it actually has uh, these hard stops built in. So if I really wanted to make sure that I was, you know, at the end of the range, it has that nice hard stop built in and it's not gonna go into like any kind of um, X pattern or anything like that. And then if I realize, oh, you know, I don't need to be shooting with ND, then I can just kind of reach in there. Even if I'm holding the rig, I can just pop it right off and then boom, I'm back to not using the ND anymore. And I dropped it. So let me get this guy off here real quick. And this is kind of a neat solution too, because if I do change lenses out, like I do have two, two other lenses. I have a SLR Magic 8 millimeter, which is like this really great wide lens. Um, I can't really use the, the matte box with it though because it will definitely vignette, but I do have the zoom filter for it also so I can attach the ND filter straight onto that if I want. Yeah, there is vignetting if you're shooting you know, 4K full sensor, so you have to kind of crop it a little bit, but you can, you can get around that by cropping. Um, or if I don't use the ND filter, it's, 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 it's really nice. It's really nice. There's no, um, there's no vignetting otherwise. Uh, the other two lenses I have, I have the Siru, Siru, God, why can't I pronounce anything? I'm having a, such a hard time pronouncing company names. Let's go with Siru, 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter. Those are the anamorphic lenses. Uh, those are super really cool. Um, native micro four thirds lenses for this system. So yeah, that's my lens uh, setup for this particular rig. And real quick, jumping up to the top handle here, 
Uh, this is uh, a, uh, I think it's a small rig top handle if I recall correctly. It comes with the little NATO rail that I put into the uh, top of the cage uh, up here. And attached to a friction clamp is a port keys LH5H monitor. And that is inside of a Neatsy uh, LH5H monitor uh, cage which is really important for this particular monitor because this particular monitor is fantastic, but it's also the lightest, cheapest, flimsiest feeling monitor I've ever felt in my entire life. So having a cage around it is really great and I feel a lot better moving it up and down like this on the friction arm uh, when I have the cage around it. Um, also serves to clamp in the HDMI cable when it's plugged in. Um, over here on this side, I have a little outrigger uh, extension for the hot shoe. I have an Asden uh, microphone. I'll link it below again. And I just, it just sits up on here. On the hot shoe position here, it was, it was hitting up against the monitor, so I had to sit it over here. Um, and then on the back, I just have a little uh, microphone cable, a little extension for the 3.5 millimeter that I run around. And that connects with the shorter cable on the on the SMX 30, I believe it is. So yeah, um, big question is how do I power this thing, right? To me, I was never worried about um, carrying batteries, I just didn't, want a solution that was like just having to always go up inside of the camera. Um, a lot of people have V mounts sitting on the back of these or shoulder rigs and stuff like that. But again, when I show you some footage of how I actually hold this thing, you'll notice that a V mount probably having that much weight probably wouldn't really suit me. Um, so the way I, I end up powering this thing entirely is with uh, Sony NPF batteries. So again, we know we have a uh, 570 that goes into the, um, the, the handle here, and that powers the Nano. Into the back of the monitor, we sit another NPF battery. I, I do separate out the battery for the monitor and the battery for the camera. A lot of people will kind of run, run power down through maybe one Sony battery and then into the power port. You know, there's just been too many problems with power loops and people talking about HDMI uh, power failures and, and outlets just, or the, the ports just dying um, because of those power loops. So I have no problem just sticking the uh, Sony MPF battery up here on the top. That powers that guy, no problem. And then on the back here on these, let me see if I can get it. I hope you guys can see it there. Yeah, it's kind of sitting right here. You can see it um, on the back here on these eight inch rods, they stick out a little bit further back here. There's a 15 millimeter uh, small rig rod clamp back here and that's holding up this FOTGA, F-O-T-G-A, uh, battery adapter. Another battery slides in there. Oh, I'm using these guys. These batteries are really neat because you can actually push a button and you can see a visual indicator of how much time is actually left on them. So that just sits on the back. And even something like this provides enough counterbalance that I don't actually need to, to do anything else with it. All right, so I have the rig in my hands now. I'm gonna go ahead and sort of give you like a handling demo here real quick. Um, I don't have everything plugged in. I don't have the monitor plugged in or anything like that and the, the focus motor's not attached. But um, yeah, uh, let's just give a, a quick demo of how this actually kind of sits. Uh, and I think you'll kind of get it when you see it. So it pulls off of the um, the tripod there. I gotta say immediately, I hope you can see just how, just having even that one hand grip there really helps out. You can hold either way for a little while anyway, the entire weight of the camera system, you know, without actually having to drop <laughs> the whole damn thing. Uh, so yeah, kind of give you an idea here. What you do basically is you uh, hold it there against your enormous six pack. You know, if, you, if you're like me, you, you work out a lot. Okay, so it's not quite a six pack, but that's kind of one point right there. 
That's one point of contact. I have a little bit more of that adhesive strip back here too, just for comfort. So that is the one point right there. Also, check out the handle. The handle is going up against the, the chest area there. At any time, if I wanted to just kind of switch over and hold like that, I can also get a steadier shot just like that, holding it that way. And that feels really good. Right now, the entire weight of the system is, is it's comfortable. Like I don't have any, you know, problems with it whatsoever. Put a, putting a battery on here makes it a little bit more heavy in the front, but you can switch out either hand. Check out the rosettes also. See how my hands are kind of just situated, sort of joystick-like. Over here, I can move the focus. So I have no problems really just kind of situating like that. If it's a lower shot, I can just switch on the friction arm, switch it down like that, get lower to the ground, get the shot how I want, or switch it to my other hand. Again, if I want to keep control of the focus right here. Or if I wanted to, I could just disengage the, the Nano entirely, and I could just use the actual focus on the, the lens itself. So again, when it comes back up here, switch this back, and the whole thing feels really good. I mean, it's, it's, it's balanced well, for me anyway. Um, let's move this chair out of the way. It's balanced pretty well. Feels really good. Feels nice. Now I've just kind of adjusted the camera here a little bit at a higher angle so you can kind of get a, another view of how it's, how it's situated. But really, for me, it's just all about having points of contact on the body, you know? It's just kind of holding it up against my body. You can see that my arms are that 90 degrees. So I'm actually holding it at a, at a pretty steady pace. That, that foam grip on this pad, on this uh, handle right here, that feels really nice. Off to the side over here too, you can see I have the, the focus control. It's not plugged in at the moment, but it's right there at my fingertips. Really, really nice. Start, stop is right there at a thumb. Boom, start, stop, boom, start, stop. Another nice thing also about the uh, LH5H that I completely forgot to mention, the monitor. This monitor can control this camera. It can control ISO. It can control um, recording method, B-RAW, uh, Q5, Q1, those kinds of settings. You can even control focus on the Nano uh, with the cable if you wanted to. So all of the settings that you could adjust in the actual camera, you can adjust from the monitor via Bluetooth, which is one of the reasons I got it. It's also like 1,700 nits or something like that. So super bright outside. Uh, and even then, the Nitsy cage came with a sunshade. So all in all, the whole thing is just really, really great to shoot with. Feels really, really good and really solid. And last thing I wanted to demo real quick here is just the sort of the support system again, how you can just snap the whole thing on with the quick release plate, lock it down. And then uh, the actual fluid head is here from the tripod purchase. But, um, you know, as you'll see, it's just literally, it's just moving along the slider. If I wanted to get some nice slider movement along with it, then all I'd have to do is unlock the slider. That's the Zeppelin Micro 2 again. And now, get this nice slide. And the cool thing about this guy is that it's actually a lot longer of a slide length than it lets on. Um, and it looks like it's only like, I don't know, about a foot in length, but obviously it co covers double that um, and it has this nice friction control. So I can move along just like that and get a nice smooth shot. Um, and again, you can kind of combine so you can set up a shot and just really slowly move up. Just move along. So yeah. Zeppelin Micro 2 slider, really great. I did have one, and again, just lock it when you're done with it. I did have one particular problem with this unit, the, the slider, when I was using it on uh, the film Say, Say Their Names, uh, which I'll link to on top of the screen here. Make sure that if you, if you use the slider, if you pick it up by the slider, the screws here, one, two, three, four, these screws, there's four here and four on the other side over here. They tighten with a small Allen wrench. Just make sure these are tight. Before every shoot, just tighten these things down. Make sure they're all tight. Um, 
they should be tight, but occasionally if you're moving the tripod, if you're lifting it up by the camera and you're, you're putting strain on here, these came loose and that caused me to have a lot of uh, bumping up against the center block here, causing some really jagged uh, movements and some really uh, messed up slides. So again, Zeppin Micro 2, great slider. Make sure these are always tightened down. But uh, yeah, that's the support system for my rig. So that's my crazy whirlwind tour of the, uh, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K rig that I built here. Like I said, I, I know I glossed over a lot of this. None of it was scripted, but I just, you know, I'm packing things up uh, and moving bags around. The, the office here is a mess. <laughs> Pardon me for that. But uh, yeah, I just, uh, before I pack it all up, I wanted to kind of go over the rig, how it is right now. And uh, yeah, so like, uh, if you have any questions, please, you know, feel free to put them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them or talk, talk more about something I may have glossed over. Uh, links will be in the description uh, for a lot of this stuff. And yeah, um, I'd love to hear what you think about it. And maybe if you have any suggestions, shoot them my way. Uh, and that's about it. Can't wait to get out and actually shoot more with this thing. I've only been able to shoot one thing with it. Um, God, it's just like this whole situation. I just, I, you know, when this whole thing is over, I'm gonna take this kit, grab the kids, grab the kit, grab the kid, grab the wife, just travel everywhere and, and use this thing, you know, into oblivion. Can't wait to film more with it. It's, it feels great to use and it's, it's ready. Oh. Last thing, media, right? Somebody's out there saying, what are you recording on? Where's your SSD? Don't use the SSD, I don't use CFast. I'm using a 256 gig SD card, SanDisk. It's like the 170 megabit per second one, not the 95 megabit per second one, it's 170 megabit per second. Uh, and I'm recording B-RAW at Q5 for everything no drop frames, no problems. I think you can also do B-RAW 12 to one if you wanted to. I do have problems with an SD card if I wanna record straight to uh, ProRes, so be aware of that. But if you wanna do B-RAW Q5, which suits me just fine, go for it. Uh, Q1 I've even gotten away with. I think you can even do Q1 without dropped frames. I haven't done it with like busy, busy scenes, but like, um, I have, I have been able to record a Q1 before, but I always play it safe. I'm doing Q5, especially for just bandwidth, you know, just hard drive space. It's crazy what Q1 can eat up, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm glad I remembered that. So that truly is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, uh, click the bell so that you get notified if I put more stuff up like this. Uh, I will be putting more Blackmagic stuff up. I will be shooting more films and documentaries, thing, documentaries soon. So that's it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.